Assalamu alaikum alaykum everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel, I hope everybody is doing well. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about data structures and algorithms, the importance of them, why we use them, my personal story with them, and the most essential data structures and algorithms you should learn so that you can ace your next interview. So if that sounds good to you, let's get into the video. Data structures and algorithms are a must for us to build efficient and optimized applications, but that's not the only benefit of them. If you are somebody who's looking to get into the world of tech and ace that next interview, then you need to know data structures because you're going to be quizzed on them. There are whole websites that are dedicated to people just practicing these data structures and algorithms so that they could ace their next interviews. Some of the good ones that I know about and I would highly recommend are LeetCode and HackerRank. Both of them are excellent resources if you're trying to get into the world of data structures and algorithms and actually improve on them. However, I do not think that that's good as a first step. I think first step should always be that you get down into the nitty gritty details of the theory behind all of these data structures and I'll actually be sharing with you the eight essential data structures that I believe every software engineer should know later on in the video. And once you know these data structures and you've practiced them on lead code or a site like HackerRank, then you should be confident in applying for different technical roles and acing those interviews. And if this doesn't fancy you and you're somebody that doesn't want to talk about the world of interviewing and you're more focused upon building efficient and scalable applications, while data structures are applicable there as well. Think about it, if companies are interviewing you on these skills of whether you know data structures and algorithm, it's for the fact so that you could actually perform in your job at peak capacity. So if you want to be a software engineer that is in high demand and is somebody who's very good at their job and can fit into a wide variety of roles and be able to create optimized solutions to difficult problems, then you need to know data structures and algorithms. And I'll share a personal example with you. I work for both FANG and non-FANG companies and all of the technical interviews that I've ever had, I've always been quizzed on data structures. Yes, the questions might change depending upon the type of job that I'm doing, but there's always been questions regarding data structures and algorithms. In game development, for example, a very popular algorithm, which is for pathfinding, is called the A-star pathfinding algorithm. And that's something that you're almost definitely going to be quizzed on if you're somebody that's serious into game development and is trying to get a job in the world of game development, assuming that's the job of a developer. Moreover, there are other data structures that are used in game development as well. For example, if you develop a multiplayer game and you would like to keep a track of all of the people that are playing with each other and their scores and create a leaderboard, a very good implementation of achieving this would be to use some kind of a stack type data structure where the person with the highest score is at the top and the person with the lower score is at the bottom. So you can see how data structures surround us in our daily lives. Even big companies like Snapchat, Google, Facebook use data structures in almost all of their systems and they are quite essential to building highly reliable, scalable, optimized systems. So now that we have a good understanding of data structures and algorithm and their importance, I'm going to be sharing with you the eight quite essential data structures that I believe every programmer should know. So I'm going to be referring to my notes time and time again, just to make sure that I don't forget anything. So keep that in mind. So the first data structure that I believe that every programmer should know are arrays, how they work, the workings behind them, and what type of different use cases you can use them for. The next logical step moving onwards from arrays is going to be to use linked lists. And once you're good with both arrays and linked lists, I would say that the next two data structures that you should tackle at once are stacks and queues. Stacks are, and queues are very similar in implementation, except for the fact that a stack basically uses the life architecture, which basically means that the last thing to enter the stack is the first thing to leave. While for a queue, it's the opposite, where the first thing to enter a queue is the first thing to get out of it. Once you're done with these four very basic ones that you should definitely know the next thing that you should move on to are hash tables and hash tables are just a fancy way of saying dictionaries if you use for example python and hash tables are data structures which basically store a key and then a value corresponding to that key once you're done with hash tables the next thing that i would recommend is for you to take a look at trees and specifically for example binary search trees and things like that once you're done with that the next thing that i'd recommend is that you take a look at heaps and then the final data structure that should round everything off is graphs so if you take a look at graphs you take a look at how undirected graphs works or so directed graphs works, the different properties of a graph, trees, etc. Then I feel that you should be a very competent developer and you should be able to nail not only technical interviews, but at least 80% of the problems that are present on sites like as HackerRank or Lead Code. Would you look at that? We're almost halfway through helping you ace your next technical interview. 
So now that you have an understanding of the eight quid essential data structures, the next thing that I would recommend after this is to take a look at some algorithms. And the algorithms that I'm going to be discussing with you, I've kind of divided them into three categories. The first one being search-based algorithms, the second one being sort-based algorithms, and the third one being more specialized algorithms that I recommend that you take a look at. So let's take a look at it. But before we actually continue talking about the different algorithms that I'm going to be sharing with you, just keep in mind that while you study these algorithms, take a look at the time complexities of these algorithms, so whether they are O of N, O of N squared, things like that, and how to calculate time complexities, and then also the space complexity. So how much space does this actual algorithm, when it runs, consumes on our system? So now that you have an understanding of what time complexity and space complexity means, I'm going to be sharing with you the first category of algorithms, which are search-based algorithms. So I recommend that you take a look at the first search-based algorithm, which is linear search, which basically means starting from the start and then searching all throughout the array. The next one that I'll recommend is going to be binary search, which basically divides an array in half and then looks at the one which most probably is going to contain the value. Then there's breadth first search and depth first search. And once you have these four algorithms nailed, you should be good in these search based algorithms category. So moving on from search based algorithms category, we're going to be talking about more of the sort based algorithms. And in sort based algorithms, I'm going to have a more of extensive list, but I'm just telling you this because I believe sort based algorithms are going to really help you hone in on your skill of time complexity. So the first one that I'd recommend you take a look at is quick sort. Once you're done with quick sort, I would also recommend that you take a look at merge sort, heap sort, selection sort, and then insertion sort. And once you have all of these different sorting algorithms, down in your arsenal, you should be good in the sorting algorithms category as well. So the final category that I recommend that you take a look at are more specialized algorithms and specialized just in names, but the actual concepts that you're going to learn are going to apply to a wide variety of different software development scenarios. So the first one that I recommend is Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithms, for those of you who don't know, is an algorithm to determine the shortest path between two nodes in a weighted graph. So as you can see, that if you actually have a solid understanding of how Dijkstra's algorithm works, you're also going to have a solid understanding of how graph data structures work and the different use cases for them. And then another algorithm that I definitely recommend that you take a look at is called the Huffman encoding compression algorithm. And if you understand Huffman encoding algorithm, it's going to really give you a solid understanding of how different compression techniques work in the world of software engineering. And the actual concept that you learn with this algorithm are going to be with you for the rest of your software development journey. So once you have the actual data structures done, the algorithms done, and you have an understanding of the time and space complexity for these different algorithms, I think you should be able to tackle at least 80% of the questions that are there on Hackerland and lead code in some capacity. And you'll also be able to confidently answer any of the technical interviews that get thrown at you while you're trying to ace that next interview of yours. So now that you have an idea of the curriculum and a vague path that you can take to become a competent data structures and algorithms person, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is sharing some tips with you guys that really helped me while I was going through the same journey as you. My number one tip to you is going to be to not give up or believe in yourself. And if something feels very difficult for you, take some time off and then come back to it and try it again. It's really not going to be really difficult once you actually take a look back at things on the progress that you've made, even though initially it might seem like a mountain that's unsurpassable. So that's my number one tip to you. Believe in yourself and keep chugging along. The next thing that I'm going to be recommending to you is to actually practice these data structures and algorithms in a strongly type object oriented programming language. So even though Python is an object oriented programming language, it is not a strongly typed language. So my recommendation to you would be to use a language such as Java or C sharp. And this is going to help you in two ways. Not only are you going to understand how to implement these different data structures and algorithms, not only in theory, but in actual practice practicality as well in a language that's widely used in an industry, but it's also going to give you the ability to actually put that additional language that you used to learn these data structures and algorithms on your resume and actually make you stand out. So that's my second tip to you. My third tip to you would be to actually enroll in a course if that's something you fancy. Two of the ones that I really like and the ones that I actually enrolled in and used, even though I never completed them completely, uh, but I really like them, were the one which is on Udemy by a company called Zero to Mastery. I'll put a screenshot of that up 
here right now and a link to that in the description and then also a free one that's available on Coursera I don't know if it's free in your country but in my country it mar is marked as free so you can also join that free course if you're not willing to pay for the paid one that's on Udemy so these are two courses that I recommend that you take a look at but by no means are they necessary in your journey to become a more competent developer as always the number one thing that your matters is your willingness to put in the work and all of these data structures that I've mentioned videos for these and tutorials for these are freely available on YouTube. So for example, if you want to learn, let's just say binary search, you can just type in Google binary search Java or binary search um, theory, and it's going to give you a bunch of different videos that you can actually look at your leisure without paying for anything and actually learn all of these skills. So those were my three tips to you for acing algorithms and data structures. And hopefully one day I can see you climb the ranks of lead code. And maybe one of you is going to be that guy on lead code. That's number one on the leaderboard. So with that said, as always, if you've enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and also subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I upload a video. If I've forgotten about a data structure or algorithm that you consider very essential, please leave the doubt in the comments below and I'll definitely take a look at that and as always stay happy stay healthy keep learning keep growing and I'll see you guys in the next video